Hello everybody. In this new video, I'm going to be talking about shafts, but how you load them, how you unload them, and how that affects the trajectory of the ball, the dynamic of the golf club, and the speed that you can generate. So let's get stuck in. Just before we get started, just want to just clarify what I'll be talking about as far as shaft deflection is concerned. So I'll be talking about negative or lag deflection in the downswing, so that's when the club head is behind the shaft, or positive or lead deflection at impact, that's when the club head is in front of the shaft. I'm going to show you some examples right now on my gear system. So here we are on my gear system. And I've got two players who load the shaft in two completely different ways. So I'd like to show you how both of these guys go about doing it and basically the consequences they have in doing it in each way. So let's focalize on our green guy for the moment. So I've got this guy pretty much uh, just before the end of the backswing. And if we just keep continuing here, we're going to see that there's a very big transitional move, so i.e. The, the club's still going backwards while he starts his downswing. So the first thing I want to show you here is the shaft deflection. So we're just going to be looking at this number here. So basically when he's going to come starting the downswing, this deflection number is going to start to increase. You can see it's already at minus 11, so negative deflection or lag deflection. And it's going to continue to increase until about, I think it's 36 millimeters for this guy. So this uh, 36 millimeters in this area here. So the shaft is already uh, getting a lot of force, lots of forces and torque going through the handle. And the, the, the transition has, has created this negative deflection. Also a lot of droop, that's, that's another subject. So lots of negative deflection, lots of lag deflection on the shaft at this moment. And what's going to happen now is this, this shaft deflection will then come pretty much back to, to zero and then go back in the opposite direction into positive deflection here. So this is a, a, a really good energy transfer uh, from, from negative 30, 36 to positive 30. So there's a lot of energy being poured into the golf ball, into the club head. So this is a really good way of generating club speed. I just want to go back to the top again and I'll show you something else which is going on here as well. Now, what I'd like to show you here is, is grip speed. Now this, this number here is just basically how fast his hands or the middle of the grip is moving. Now if we look at how this accelerates, you're going to see that it's going to start to accelerate here and he's going to get to his maximum grip speed just about here, so 26 millimeters of grip speed, uh, sorry, miles an hour of grip speed here, which is an enormous amount of speed for a, for a player. That sets over uh, tour average. So lots of hand speed going on here. And what I'd like to show you here, what I think is very important to understand, is that his maximum hand speed is at this area here where the shaft is still pretty much pointing at the sky, i.e. Uh, vertical. And it's not down at impact. A lot of people seem to think that the hands reach their maximum speed at impact, but it's much, much earlier for good players. The, the tour average is generated at the round with the shaft around about 60 degrees. So this guy is really loading the shaft very early, very, very high hand speed. From this area here, the hands will then start to slow down and the club head will start to speed up. So once we get into impact, the hand's now going to be down to something around 18, so 18 miles an hour here from 26. So a big sort of deceleration of the hands and a big acceleration of the club head. The other thing that's going to be happening here as well, if we just scroll back up to, to loft, you can see that he started off with 10 degrees here. and He's pretty much arrived at the same spot here, and they're pretty much 11 degrees here. So the, 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 the way he's, he's, he's loaded this shaft, he's been loading it hard here, and then the shaft's unloading and coming back into impact. And that's he's managing the, the dynamic loft much better than someone who would do it another way. So this is it really benefits in, in many different ways. So he's creating more club speed via the shaft, 
creating more energy via the shaft. He's, he's also creating a much better dynamic loft by charging and uncharging the shaft in the correct manner. Now we scroll across now and we show my guy in the red, and I think you're going to understand why he's in the red. Up. Let's do the same thing. So we go back up and we're just going to look at shaft deflection here. And the way he's going to load the shaft is going to be completely different. And if you remember the, the green guy, he was already coming backwards. He's already turning back to the, object, to the target while the club was going backwards. This guy's just coming straight up to the top. There's no basic uh, move going backwards. So there's no, uh, there's no charge, there's no load of the shaft going on here. So right now we're at negative four uh, of deflection. And this is basically not really going to move much. His maximum deflection is going to be around about here, which is 10 millimeters. So as you can see, he's thrown the club back behind him, sort of casting this, this club behind him. And that's creating very low negative deflection, so very low lag deflection. So the shaft hasn't really been loaded. So what's going to happen is basically the shaft will now completely unload in the opposite direction. And then we'll end up with a lot of negative or positive deflection of impact. So we've gone from 10 millimeters up here to 51 millimeters down here now. And obviously that's going to have lots of different problems uh, with ball flight and, and dynamic loft, which I'll show you further along the line. So not charging the shaft is not creating any energy. And it's also creating a lot of uh, positive deflection at impact. Now, the way he did this, if we go back up here again, and we just look at now the grip speed, you'll see that his grip speed is obviously going to be slower, but it's also going to be a lot later. It's uh, around the 21 mark, I think. Yeah, about here. So he gets to his maximum hand or grip speed in this area. So the shaft is now basically uh, parallel with the ground. So much, much later than our, our green player. And that is creating all this positive protection down in the bottom of the shaft. It's also making the club move slower. So by sure speeding the hands or, or getting to your maximum hand speed this late on in the downswing will also slow the club down but it also create positive deflection much earlier so once we get into the ball again we've just got this huge positive deflection and the hand speed hasn't really changed so he's basically going the same sort of hand speed all the way to the ball so he's gone from 21 to 19 so it's hardly any deceleration of the hands that's why there's, not, there's hardly any acceleration of the club head. Now, if I just overlay these both players now, we come in here and we go back up to the top. And I'm going to bring them both down to their maximum hand speed. So our green guy is going to be about here. And our red guy is going to be around here. So you can see there's a huge difference in the way they accelerate the club and the way they're going to load the shaft and you can see with the, the red guy he's, he's generated so much more loft uh, he's gone from from nine degrees to 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 almost 20 degrees 19 and a half degrees when he's done the way he's been loading the shaft so it's uh it's really how you load that shaft and when you load that shaft it's it's, it's going to change the way the club head uh, works and how the club works, the dynamics of the club. And that obviously is going to change the trajectory as well. So two completely different ways of loading the shaft with two completely different results. So to summarize, there's a lot of things going on, lots of forces and torques being applied to the shaft on the way down. But basically what you, what you don't want to be doing is having your maximum hand speed late in the downswing. The later your hands get to their maximum hand speed, maximum speed, the less energy transfer there will be through the shaft to the club head. So we want to have that hand speed early, maximum hand speed early in the downswing, negative deflection. So basically what's going on to create that is you'll be changing direction while the club is still going backwards. 
And these forces and torques that should be predicted, which are applying to the handle, will create that negative deflection and that maximum hand speed earlier in the downswing. I hope this video has helped you understand a bit more how a shaft works in a golf swing, and I hope to see you soon in news and some new videos.